If you've been watching the signs of the times, you will know that the King is coming soon. Welcome to Solid Rock Christian Assembly, where the Word of God is rich and powerful. And today, Pastor Garth shares on Here Comes the King. Solid Rock, where comes you? Today I'm going to use as a subject, Here Comes the King. Here Comes the King. It has been many, many centuries since the promise of this powerful king that would by far surpass all the kings in Israel's history. This included kings such as Jeroboam II, not the first, the second, with his military might. And Solomon with all of his wealth and human wisdom. It's a king that would exceed them. Not only that, but it would be a king that would even be greater than David, that is the God-directed king, who is no doubt Israel's greatest king. And so, ever since exile, some 600 or so years, um, there were, Israel was without a king. They were under the rulership of many uh, empires, starting with the the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, a, a savage reign that started off with the destruction of of, uh, of, of the plucking out of the of, of, of the eyes of the king of Israel, and also the slaughtering of many of his offspring. The savage reign of Nebuchadnezzar, that was the that that, that was his his empire called uh, Babylon. And then it continued down to the reign of Caesar Augustus. This is the Roman uh, rulership or their empire. And Israel was now um, under their rulership. And so they waited down through the century for God to interrupt the, the, the goings. And for God to interrupt all that was happening there to bring forth a king that would ultimately be the pinnacle of what God would do in the history of Israel. There was great anticipation as it relates to this king. A lot of challenges. Israel has, ha has had some very, very difficult times, very, very challenging moments. But all of this was to be interrupted with the birth of this long-awaited king. The Bible speaks of this king. Well, first of all, if we just consider his birth just for a moment, this king is none other than Jesus Christ. His birth was in obscurity. His birth was just something that took place in a place called Bethlehem. Herod was not there to welcome him. Caesar was not there or any of the prime leaders to welcome him into the world. The Sadducees were not there. The Pharisees were not there. The high priest was not there. But still, God was doing something remarkable in Israel and they were blinded to it. The greatest event. In all of history was taking place at this moment in time. And here was the introduction of God's greatest gift and God's greatest plan. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. Lying in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. That's what was transpiring in, all, in Israel, or more specifically in Bethlehem at the time. And this was God's greatest gift to planet earth. You never know when a great event may be taking place. Or you never know where there is a great beginning. I'm sure at the time when Moses came on planet earth, when, 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 when Israel was facing horrend, the horrendous cha uh, challenges of, the, again, of savagery and all of that coming out of Egypt, the slaughtering of children, and it seemed as if all hope was gone. God was in the midst of all of this, paving the way and creating a new beginning that a deliverer would come on the scene by the name of Moses. And sometimes we look at our dark Gethsemane. 
We look at the challenges that we're facing on, 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 a, on a community level. See the impact on the family. See the national direction of, of the nation. And even seeing on a global level what is transpiring uh, across, across planet Earth. And we have this other concern in the midst of us. I want you to understand that the God that we serve, he is not in any way caught by surprise. The God that we serve, he is still on the throne. The God that we serve is not sitting there and saying to himself, oh my God, what am I going to do? No, he is God and he is the one who is able to turn any time and bring about his divine purpose. And so we need to keep that in mind. And so hope is always available for the believer. You know where our strength comes from? Our strength comes from our trust in God and our absolute commitment to him. And if our trust is in God and our absolute commitment is in him and it is manifested in, in our practical, you, you know, the practical outworking of the righteousness of God in us, ultimately at the end of the day, I can tell you one thing. Challenges may come, but victory shall be yours in Jesus' name. You never know. When there is a great beginning, history is filled with moments where you look at dark, dark experiences and only to realize that those dark experiences turned out to become, you know, the pathway to victory and transformation. When John Wesley came on the scene, he was extremely sickly, seemed as if he wasn't going to make it. Hey! He lived a long life, probably some almost 90 years. And then in the midst of all of that, he was able to turn England upside down. He was able to pave the way for the gospel to saturate uh, the, the North, American Empire, uh, North, uh, North America, more specifically uh, America. And then from there, he, we were, he was able to cause the gospel to, to saturate many parts of the globe. And today... We're living on, the, on, on, on his heritage, so to speak, as far as the dispensation of God's grace in him. We can never look at things from the outward part and draw a conclusion. And I'm so happy for that because some days things do look challenging. But the God that we serve, he's still alive, he's still on the throne. And so God specializes in taking people out of the low places and bringing them into the high places. God specializes in taking people who humble themselves. And then he said to them, he who humbles himself will be exalted. And then God specializes also in taking people from the high place to the low place. He who exalts himself shall be a base. You never know when a great event may be transpiring in the world. We never knew or we never know where a great beginning may be happening. Every arrival of a new soul in the world is a mystery and a shut casket of possibilities. God is able to cause the things that we would consider as, you know, our ultimate doom. God is able to take it, to let it become our ultimate victory. And so, all the possibilities and outcome of, of one or even life sometimes is just totally hidden. And God is able to use them for his honor and for his glory. And you do, it doesn't matter your moment, it doesn't matter your season and all of that. God can bring you answers to deep things at very late phases in life. Ask Hannah or Anna and she will tell you, I waited in the temple for many, many years. And here I am today as an old lady and God has caused my eyes to be open to see his eternal plan. And God is able to do that. Not only that, but ask other individuals there. Ask um, Zachariah again, who, was, who, who again, with his wife Elizabeth, it seemed as if things were at the end, but God came in the midst of that, fulfilled his divine purpose. Ask Simeon, also who was in the temple, 
God is able to do amazing things regardless of our phases. That king came in obscurity. Not only did he come in obscurity, but then after a while, that king grew up in a place called Nazareth. Many people would have, you know, bypassed him and all of that and say, oh, nothing good comes out of Nazareth. But I want to say to you today, God can bring whoever he wants from wherever he wants. And it doesn't matter what your setting is. God is able able to bring you out of there and do great things. He grew up there. And then as he moved on in life, he defied matter by feeding 5,000 men plus women and children, near 20,000 people with five loaves and two fish. Another time he fed another 4,000 men, probably the same number of women, and then lots of children, maybe some 12, 16,000 of them again with less food. And then God was able to come not only to defy matter, he was able to defy nature. He was able to calm the sea to the point that his disciples disciples look and said, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the storms obey him? Later on, he was able to heal sick sickness, whether he was present or absent. In some cases, he would touch them. In some cases, he would speak. In some cases, he would say, go home. Things have changed. And when people would get home, they would realize that things did change. Sometimes they needed confirmation. They would say, when did that take place? They said, about 2, two o'clock yesterday. He said, that's exactly when I was speaking to the Lord. And he told me, every little thing is going to be all right. When I got home, everything was good. He was able to cast out devils, including legion and all of that. He was able to conquer death in terms of the, the bringing um, uh, Lazarus from the grave. Our Jairus' daughter, or he himself, was able to go into the grave and to conquer death, hell, and the grave. To get up out of it and to say, I am the resurrection and the life and all of that. He came and he was able to do amazing things. And towards the end of it, he decided, well, you know, or even in the midst of it, he said, let me just show a little bit more of my ability here so you would never be in doubt. He defied uh, gravity. He was able to get up and to walk on the water itself. Again, the apostles saw that and they were scared to death. And finally, at the end, he said, you know, I'm leaving now. And the Bible said again, he defied gravity. Long before we had these, these, these makeshift, um, you know, no, these kind of make-believe superheroes who could fly. We had a Christ who could, have, who could easily fly. He just got up and he made his way right into heaven. And God, that mean, I mean, this Christ was just amazing. He was he, he's just something uh, different. And I want to say to us, to you today, that God sent forth uh, his son, this king. And this king came on planet Earth. And one of the things that transpired there is that while he was there, unfortunately, as you, as you moved on, in the midst of all of these celebrations, Jesus Christ came into Bethlehem, and then tears came into his eyes, and then right away he started crying because he was rejected. This, is the clim this was the climatic moment in Israel history, and, um, and, and then... As, as Jesus got into, uh, got, in, got into Israel, got into Jerusalem, the Bible said, the Bible said, as he came there and the people were there crying Hosanna and all of that, people were there celebrating, screaming about him and all of that. But in the midst of all of that, Jesus stopped the, you know, he stopped for a moment, he looked, and then tears started coming to his eyes because he recognized that these very people who are here today cheering Hosanna, will in a matter of days turn again, Sim, and say, crucify him. We do not want him and all of that. This Christ was rejected. But something I want to focus on a little bit here about uh, this king is to say, the, the, the question was asked in verse 10, all of Jerusalem was moved saying, who is this? What makes Jesus Christ so different? There have been many kings throughout history. Many, many uh, kings who, who occupy the throne of Israel. But what makes this one so unique and so different? 
When it comes to this king and this Christ, I want you to understand that he's not any ordinary person. And this is, this, this is, this, we need to say this because uh, in this moment in history, the deity of Christ is being challenged more than anything else. People are trying to belittle Jesus Christ so we could sort of just all just get along and just sort of just say, you know what? Um, at the end of the day, every religion will take us into heaven. They're trying to say to us that, look, we, you can believe in God because if you believe in God, then God is such a vague, vague, wide, wide ocean, so to speak, that any God is just a God. Go in Hinduism and they say, well, we believe in God. You go in Islam and they said, yeah, we believe in God. You know, we, you, you, you go everywhere else, the Jehovah Witnesses and all of that. We believe in God. We believe that, you know, that God is there and that all these amazing roads ultimately will culminate to us coming into the presence of God. But I want to say to you today that this Jesus that we're speaking about, the Jesus that is rever uh, revered by, 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 by so many, including all the various religions of the earth, he's the most unique and I iconic figure in all of human history. Jesus Christ stands as the moral uh, uh, climax of anyone who has ever been on the face of this earth, and very few would ever argue that. But this very Christ said concerning uh, himself that he said I am the way he said I am the truth and he said I am the life not only that I mean these are some deep claim but then he went on further to say but no one comes to the father that is God Almighty who sits on the throne of the universe no one comes to the father but by me. That is a massive, massive, massive claim. And the reality is that we are so pressured as it relates to this claim now because many would say, don't say that. Well, we're not saying that or we didn't invent that. It's there from the word of God and it came from his own mouth. He's the one that's declaring it, that said, yes, there have been kings. Yes, there have been all kinds of amazing kings. But there is only one king of kings. There is only one Lord of lords. There is one God of gods. He's saying that ultimately at the end of the day, Every other God is an idol, but I am God. Amen. I mean, that's what he is saying. And if we examine the history, the personality, the message of Jesus Christ, we realize that he was a uniquely outstanding individual. And when we look at the, his teaching, we realize that his brilliance was out of this world. And, if, and so we in no way can ever conclude that he did not know what he was saying. He knew exactly what he was saying. He is the epitome of holy living. Yet at the same time, he declared that. I want to ask you today, has there ever been another holy man or woman in Scripture who has ever made such outrageous claim? No, they would not dare make such a claim. Moses would not in any way do that, even though he is kind of like the Old Testament. He's kind of like the lawgiver. He is the individual that when we think of Israel's, uh, you, you, you know, great history of men and women of God who, have, who, who, who committed themselves and did great things, when we think of them, we think of Moses. And Moses by no means would ever do that. David would never do that. Daniel wouldn't. None of the prophets, Elijah wouldn't. No one would ever do anything like that. As a matter of fact, 
When we move into, uh, into phases where anyone would even dare try to, to, to give these men or women praise beyond what they should, they quickly would say, no, 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 please don't do that. I am a man just like you. I need help just like you. John the Baptist said concerning him, the greatest of, 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 of all the, 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 when we consider the, the, the history of God's work and in people's life, Jesus made reference to John the Baptist as the very pinnacle of it all. And John the Baptist said, um, I am not worthy. There is one who's coming after me, whose latchet I'm not able to lose, whose shoes I'm not even able to, you know, to put on or anything like that because he was before me even though I was born before him. And at the same time, he is worthy. He said, no, 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 I can't baptize you. There was a recognition of him. But here's the thing. Jesus didn't come there and say, hey, John, watch, watch, watch what you're saying about me. Because that's the normal response to anybody who, is, who would ever give any kind of praise beyond what is appropriate. They would say, no, 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 no. They prefer to say, please, no praise here, no praise here. It's, let's give God the glory. But Jesus wasn't like that. Jesus took the praise. Jesus took the worship. Jesus talks about himself in amazing ways. And everyone around him dealt with him differently. And so this was no ordinary king. Here comes the king. Who is this? I want to say to you today that we're not dealing with no ordinary king coming out of Israel history. But we're dealing with God Almighty himself. We're dealing with the ancient of days. We're dealing with the one who is co-creator with God the Father. We're dealing with the one who was long before Moses and everyone else. He was on the throne and he con condescended and took on human form. When it comes to Christ, there is no two way about him. It's either he is Lord of all. Oh, he's not Lord at all. And we've come to recognize that this Christ, when you consider Jesus, Jesus, he forgave sin. He accepted worship. He was raised from the grave. Jesus Christ was the most fluent individual when it came to the things of heaven. I mean, Paul talked about being caught up in the, in the spirit and, and into the third heaven. And he said, I heard things that were not, 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 not that, that humans were not, were not to utter any at all. He's saying this, this thing, as a matter of fact, this revelation, when God gave it to me, God decided to cause a, a, a buffeter to come upon me, a messenger of Satan to keep me humble so I would not go out there and start to declare these things lest anyone should come and exalt me in any way. It's a heavenly revelation. But not Jesus. Jesus comes on the scene and he talks about heaven like this. Hey, he just talks about heaven and this is what transpired in heaven. My father is in heaven. I was up there also. I came down from heaven. I beheld Satan like fall from heaven like lightning. I was there in the very beginning. And Jesus started to talk about history in, in such a natural way, in such incredible fluency and all of that, and authority. No, he never had issue with confidence or anything like that. He never corrected himself or, 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 or then at the same time say, you know, guys, you know, guys, you know, you know these are just revelation that I got. Don't take no, Jesus just dealt with it in such an incredible, fluent way. When he's talking about the Father, he talked before, before that we talked about the Father like the great God of glory, you know, the, the, the Holy One, the Lord and Jehovah and things like that. They talk about God in, as that transcendent one. When Jesus came and started to talk about God, Jesus started to talk about him. Yeah, my Father and I, yep. Yeah. My father work, and so do I. Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away, but not my will, but your will be the... Oh, father, glorify me with the glory I had when we were together in, the, in heaven and all of that. And, and then he said, Father, you know, remember these apostles I'm praying for. Con consistently, he made reference to him as daddy and all of that. You know, that kind of a thing that, that he and I are, you know. And people are like, no. 
He is just an ordinary man. Well, you know, the first person who ever uh, destroyed all of that was Christ himself. He talked about God with such fluency. Angels were just normal behavior. Oh, yeah. As far as marriage, you know, you guys should not uh, uh, divorce or anything like that. That's not the plan of God. From the very beginning, this was the plan. And then he said, when you go into heaven, furthermore, you're just going to be like the angels. The angels, they, you, you, know, you know, they do not have male or female or anything like that. You just go up there and you're, you're gender neutral and all of that and, and so forth. And he just speaks of, you know, of life in such a fluent way when it comes to angels. I could call 10,000 angels at this point in time. So it's not like Lord send forth angel. I could command 10,000 angels right now to come and rescue me. But that's the way he speaks of angels. When he came to Satan and all of that, he never even made an issue about Satan as far as his power or anything like that. He just speaks to Satan as if he has no power. Satan, it is written. Satan, it is written. Satan, as a matter of fact, get thee behind me, Satan, and all of that. And then the Bible, Satan fled and left him for a season. When Satan come with all of his hosts, in the case of lesion, and many of them, and say, we are lesion because we are many. Jesus Christ just said, you know, out of them. And then right away, satanic hosts start to beg and say, please, 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 please don't send us here. Don't send us into the abyss. Because he knew we, he was not dealing with an ordinary king who came there like David. But here was the king who had the ability to speak to demonic hosts and to send them right into the abyss. He was not an ordinary person by any means. He talked about the afterlife like it's, it's nothing. He said, look, as a matter of fact, he said, I'm going to be leaving soon. But he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. In other words, I know this thing. I've been up there. I see it. I made it and all of that. And he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, you may be there also. It's just a natural, fluent conversation as it relates to the, the afterlife. Don't you know, uh, you're going to sit with me in my father's kingdom. You're going to be judging angels and, and different things like that. And he, he continued to talk about it like it's really nothing. Why? Because he was not an ordinary person and he is not the equivalent of Krishna he's not the equivalent of Buddha he's not the equivalent of Muhammad he exceeds every single one of them he's by far you know well beyond them you've never heard Krishna talk about himself in any remarkable way you have never heard anything about Buddha beyond whatever you've never heard anything about Muhammad uh, or anything beyond you know the fact that Muhammad was just a man but Jesus Christ, it's a different level we're dealing right, right now. I hope your eyes have been opened to the truth that is present today, that the King is returning soon. And we thank you for joining us at Solid Rock Christian Assembly, where we love the Word of God because it has a power to transform. And so we invite you to join us on a Wednesday at 7 p.m. for our Bible study so that you can grow in your faith. And visit us on Sunday mornings for our 1030 worship service. Like our Facebook page and visit our YouTube channel for more sermons. We look forward to seeing you again at The Rock. Solid Rock, Lord, you.